It's not the kind of question that you might have asked before today. How do classical musicians actually earn money? However, it's an interesting topic, not only for classical musicians, because it generalizes also for all kinds of musicians and artists and anybody who wants to make at least a portion of their livelihood based on putting out to the world something that's very important to them personally. I've been a classical musician since I was 11 years old when I started in school band. I didn't think of it that way back in school band. It was more like marches. However, over time, it evolved that way. I eventually went to music school at St. John's and St. Ben's as a young person and through lots of life circumstances, finished it up finally in 2012 at St. Cloud State University. I went on to a master's degree program in music composition at the University of Minnesota. Only went one year. I really didn't want the degree. I just wanted to study with the composition <laughs> teacher. And, and eventually they realized I wasn't going to do the degree, so they decided that they didn't really want me attending. <laughs> <laughs> so, revenue streams. First, it's important to differentiate what people are paid for and how they're paid. People have jobs in, in, in music. You can be a music educator and work in K-12 or the colleges, or you can be a very, very high-end performer and you're employed by major orchestras like this, the Minnesota Orchestra or also in our state, the St. Paul Chamber Orchestra, who actually pay the people that are the, the top musicians as employees. They have benefit packages. They pay them well. Very, very good gig. Very few of those gigs in the country. Most people that are classical musicians are paid in a freelance way. They're getting basically paid for the job. And they're steady jobs in performance, music performance, like a church musician, like a choir director, like our St. Cloud Symphony Orchestra, in which I was the contrabassoonist and the bassoon player for, gosh, about seven to eight years. And I was paid $12 every time there was a rehearsal and $12 for each concert. And if you're one of the first chair players, one of the principals, they call it, to play the solos, they're paid $20. Those mm -hmm. that come from a distance, they also pay some mileage. So in addition to steady gigs, there are what are called just freelance gigs, in which people know you're a player. As a bassoonist, I was somewhat in demand. Last year, I paid, played uh, perhaps three different concerts in which I was hired to, to assemble what we might want to call a pickup orchestra to play for a choir. And, I, and that was a lot of fun, and we just formed the orchestra just to play those particular performances. And I was paid, well, you, usually those kinds of jobs, about $50 per rehearsal and per performance, and usually three in total, which is pretty common. Then there's, in addition to performance payments, we have the next revenue stream, which is teaching. I now have two students. I've had two students for a long time. They are retired. One's a retired person, one's a... Um, uh, uh, actually, a doctor uh, who uh, both wanted to learn to play the saxophone, so I do saxophone lessons. A third revenue stream, in addition to teaching for me, is composing. And the revenue comes from actually some uh, uh, an organization that pays people that create, authors, publishers, and musicians. My organization is called ASCAP. Uh, American Society of Authors, American Society of, of Composers, Authors, and Publishers. There it is. And I need to register my new pieces and arrangements with them. And then when they're performed, then I have to upload a program or make a, a copy of a program and send it to them uh, as an email attachment showing that I actually did have this concert and these works were actually performed. And for that, I'll receive royalty checks. So not a lot anywhere from 20 to $70. But I did earn revenue income quite a bit last year, quite a bit for, for a composer like me, who did a small place, which was around um, $500 for both the, yes. the composer as a royalty and also having my own publishing company. Because of the publishing side, you get about half and the other side as well as royalties. The next revenue stream for me and classical musicians like myself is grants. I've had the good fortune, mainly due to have uh, a state like Minnesota that is really mun mun munificent, munificent <laughs> <laughs> in supporting artists. 
and I won an individual artist grant. I run, won another grant for a piece that, that I composed, which was performed by the Minnesota Symphonia. And uh, music I do. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I earned another grant for our, for our project. So granting organizations are very generous in our state, and they do provide support for artists like, like composers and other visual artists. The what, fifth revenue stream now is having a product of some kind. So my bassoon teacher, she sells her reeds all over the country. And she makes a, quite a, a, a nice revenue stream from that. In addition to her work as a freelance musician, and she does a lot of performing and teaching. So she has all three going very, very strongly. And uh, she between those three, she earns a very nice living. She earns a, really a, a real reasonable middle class living doing what she loves to do. My revenue stream is I buy and sell primarily bassoons, also some clarinets and saxophones occasionally, oboes. And I buy them at such a low price, I hope, that I can afford to pay for all the cost it takes to repair them, which is expensive. The dealer that sells them for me also repairs them, and they book out at $100 an hour for repairing instruments. So I have to buy them reasonable enough, guesstimate the repair, and also the commission I pay them to sell them and hope there's something left over for me and hope that I have purchased a, a, an asset rather than a liability. Mm -hmm. Because once in a while, it ends up costing me money because I guess wrong and or I just am aware of what could happen. Other times I make some money. Nice revenue stream for me. And the last way classical musicians make money is to have some kind of an online presence. And the online presence I'm starting now is leadingmusicians.com, which will allow musicians to register on that and have, in essence, a mini website as a page. And it will help classical musicians all over the, the country that wish to be on this for a very small amount of money to have their presence known and show up in online ways. So those are the ones that I'm doing and the ones many other musicians do. And thank you. <laughs>